number nine. Don't stand around. Go on home, all of you. What happened, Constable? Well, there's been another murder. A murder? There's nothing you can do. I told you to go home. Go on. Well, just a minute, miss. Are you alone? You work out at the Warren home, don't you? That's nearly two miles from here. You'd better hurry if you're going to get there before dark. Got any ideas who did it, Constable? Yeah. Same fellow did the first one, same fellow did the second one. But who he is, I don't know. Somebody in this town, somebody we all know, somebody we see every day. Might be me, <laughs> might be you. Well, how could it? I mean, uh, I was here at my desk. Anybody oh, be could... be quiet. Didn't know you was called, Dr. Perry. I wasn't. As I was leaving the office, I heard about the murder and thought I'd drop in and see if there was anything I could do. Well, there ain't. Unless, of course, you're a good enough doctor to uncork a miracle and bring the dead back to life. I don't think I'm that good. There's no sense in you going up. She's dead, all right. Dr. Harvey's up there, and that's what he says. She's dead. Well, in that event, Constable, I certainly can't do her any harm. Hello, Perry. Dr. Harvey. There's nothing for you to do unless you just want to do some sightseeing. How was she killed? Strangled. She was dead when we got here. Who was she? That lame girl that uh, worked over at Nelson's. How awful. She was just in my office last week. Did she pay her bill? Or was this her way of getting out of it? I haven't enough experience to make that sort of joke. Perhaps not, Dr. Perry. I'll run along. Oh, just a minute. I hear you were over to see Mr. Stover last night. Yes, I was. Don't you know he's my patient? I only went because they called me. Because they told me that you'd refuse to go until morning. I thought it might be serious. You've got a lot to learn, young fellow. You've only been here a short time. I've been here for a good many years. If I answered all the calls as they came along, I wouldn't get any sleep at all. Well, that's why I think there's room for two doctors in this town. I reckon so, but let the competition be on an open plane. Ethics. Do you get what I mean, Perry? If ever I'm called on an emergency and you happen to be sleeping, I intend to go. That's very noble and ambitious. Don't let anything discourage you. Nothing will. Oh, by the way, you might like to see what the Stover did to that prescription you wrote last night. thing to have happen in your afternoon off. I've been pretty busy lately. I haven't had much of a chance to drop in and see you. But I've been thinking about you a great deal. You haven't any family, Helen. No one else to worry about you. And I got to wondering just how long you were going on like this. I mean doing the work you, you're doing at the Warrens. You wanted to be a nurse or a teacher. You mean you're going to give up that with out making an effort to get your voice back again? Yes, I know, Helen, you did see a doctor once. That was a long time ago. They might have discovered a lot since then. And there are specialists in Boston now. 
I don't want to build your hopes up, Helen. It seems such a shame to give up so easily. You'd rather I wouldn't talk about it, wouldn't you? All right, I won't. You know the words of that tune? sent you for me, did they? Oh, I sent me for Dr. Harvey, but Pa wants you to come. I'm afraid I can't help you out this time, Freddie. You don't understand, your father's Dr. Harvey's patient. We'll have to try and find him for you. I'll call him as soon as I get home. Oh, please, Dr. Parry, you come. I want you to come. All right, come on, get in. We'll go up and have a look. I'll run you home afterwards. Afraid you'll be late? You sure you'll be all right? Go straight home, won't you, Helen? us about the murder. For a while, I thought it might have been you. It's terrible, that's what it is. Horrible. As if it isn't bad enough murdering people. 
But all these defenseless women. First, there was the girl with a scar on her face. Then that poor, simple-minded creature. And now this cripple. It, it seems like... Oh, I guess you've had enough for one afternoon. Now, now get your wet shoes off before you catch your death. And you'd better get up to Mrs. Warren straight away. She's raising a rumpus with that nurse of hers again. Won't even allow her in the room now. <clears throat> she sent down word for you to go up the moment you came in. Is that someone at the front door? gone into Mrs. Warren yet? Hurry along, will you? It's about time you got here. Mrs. Warren's been asking for you all afternoon. She won't let me do anything for her. Oh, no. I'm ordered to sit out in the hallway. Why in the world am I kept on here to nurse someone who can't stand the sight of me? But then, I can't stand the sight of her either. I've nursed some queer ones in my time, but she's got them all beat. She's sly too. Even with her eyes shut, she seems to be watching you like an evil spirit. But get in there before she gets herself into another tantrum.
I got him before he got me. Tiger, I mean. I was as good as any man. You're not only late, but you're playing games. Why are you so late? Never mind, never mind. Come here. I hoped you were never coming back. But you'd run away. Leave this house tonight if you know what's good for you. You understand? Who's there? I told you to sit in the hall. Why must you spy on me? I'm not spying on you. It's time for your medicine. Helen can give me my medicine. I don't know what I'm being paid for. You're being paid to sit in the hall. That's all you're good for. Get out. to wait in the living room. Thank you. Put these in order, will you? Yes, sir. Oh, Constable. Yes, Professor Warren. I'll be with you in just a moment. Now, Blanche, get these ready as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Hello, Constable. Oh, hello, Professor. Wouldn't you like to sit down? Oh, no, no, thanks. You sure got a lot of interesting things here. Uh, what's this? That? Plant life. Oh. You mean to say you can write a whole book about uh, little stuff like this? Yeah. Uh, what did you want to see me about, Constable? Oh, a couple of things, Professor. I hate to bother you at this time of night, but I figure it's important enough. <sighs> you know, there's been another murder. Yes, so I've heard. What I want to say is that we've traced the murderer to this vicinity. Are you certain? Yes. That's why I've come here. That's why I'm asking everyone to be careful. Keep your doors and windows locked tonight. Well, I'll see that your orders are carried out, Constable. I'm especially worried about uh, that girl who works for you. Helen? Yes. You see, every one of those girls murdered had something the matter with her. Something wrong. Oh, you mean some sort of an affliction? Yes. Now, my hunch is that this murderer whoever he is, is... I understand uh, exactly what you mean, and I assure you that I shall be especially careful about Helen. As a matter of fact, I'll see to it that somebody is with her at all times. Good. <gasps> oh, you scared the life out of me, Steve. I didn't hear you come in. Don't stop typing. How many times have I asked you not to see me when I'm working? So embarrassing. Please, leave me alone. I can't stay away from you. Now, when am I going to see you? Where? You're not going to see me at all if you don't let me finish this. But I'm so bored. I don't know what to do with myself. Stephen, you're going to get us into trouble. Now, please, go. No. Then I'll just have to finish this someplace else. Oh, Miss Blanche. Yes, Mr. Warren. David. Oh. You remember my stepbrother, don't you? I sure do. Hadn't seen you in a long time, Mr. Warren. Heard you were back. How'd you leave things over in Europe? I left everything in order. They like you to. Paris must be quite a town. Yes, it is. Lots of beautiful women. From what I've seen, they're not so bad here, either. Always wanted to go there myself, but uh, I've been married since I was 16. Never had a chance. Must be pretty exciting. From what I understand, it's been pretty exciting here for you, too. Oh, yes, it has been at that. I wish there was something I could do to help. Oh, don't think there is. Stephen, the constable wants to know if anyone left the house today. Well, nothing personal, I assure you. I've been asked to check up on everybody. I haven't been out all day, Constable. 
That's all I wanted to know. Thank you very much. Well, good night, then. Don't forget to lock your doors. I won't. His stepbrother gave him an accusing look. <clears throat> oh, Professor, could I see you for a moment, please? Would you mind calling him? He doesn't know me. Well, you're not afraid of him, are you? I'm sure he loves policemen. I'm not in uniform. <laughs> All right, Carlton. Go away. Well, good night. Good night. Anything wrong, Albert? I just stopped by to tell him the same thing I told you in town today, Oates. See anything on your way home? No. Well, good night, Professor. Good night. Your hat, Oates. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. Come along, Carlton. Evening, Helen. Helen, I want to talk to you a moment. Now, Helen, I don't want to frighten you. But because of what happened in town, we have to be especially careful for the next few days. If you should see anything outside of this house, or even in it, that makes you suspicious, I want you to let me know. See that someone else does your outside work. You stay in the house. And don't hesitate to come to me at any hour if you need help. Now, you may go up to my stepmother if you wish. Helen, remember what I told you. Don't trust anyone. Leave the fire alone, Helen. Pack your things. Leave this house tonight. Too many trees stretch out their branches. Knock the window. Try to get in. When it's dark, they move. I've seen them. Creeping up to the house. Go away, my dear. I'm such a little girl. I want to take care of you. If you won't leave the house as I, I ask you to, you must sleep in this room tonight. Don't be afraid of me. I want to take care of you. You see, you're not safe, my dear. Don't leave me alone. You're worse than Nurse Barker. Stop fussing. If you won't leave the house as I ask you, the least you can do is to leave me alone. Go over there and sit down. Sit down.
Helen, what is it? Mother must be worse. Get Albert. Give me the brandy, Helen. It's empty. Is there any more? Give me the ether, then. Don't stand there. Give me the ether. Why did you have to come back, Stephen? Why didn't you stay in Europe? Shh, Mother. There's always trouble when you come, Stephen. Always trouble. Why didn't you stay away? I want Dr. Parry. Dr. Parry? Yes. You said you didn't want him here anymore. You and Albert decided that. I want Dr. Parry. Mother, we've given him a chance. You haven't improved any. I'll never improve with that ancient Dr. Harvey. Stupid girl. It's all your fault. You brought on this attack. She deliberately refused to let me have my spectacle case. Mother, Helen wouldn't have any reason for refusing to give it to you. Never mind, never mind. We won't talk about it anymore. Get out now, both of you. Go and call Dr. Parry. Will you be all right? After all these years, you asked me if I'd be all right. Oh, Stephen. Get out. Take that ether with you. Well, Mother, I can see that you're feeling better already. I don't like that ether. I don't think it does any good. But Dr. Parry and Dr. Harvey explained to you that taken in small quantities, it's a stimulant rather than a depressant. It did help you, didn't it? It's been another murder, hasn't there? Nobody told me. Nobody had to. I always know everything. I'll come over. Yes, I'll come over. Pale hands I love beside the Shalimar. Now, now. Oh, Steve, I'm so unhappy. Stephen. Where were you this afternoon? Why? Those are mine. I know. So you've unmasked me. Well, I don't know whether I've unmasked you or not. But I don't know why you told the constable you weren't out this afternoon when obviously you were. Well, to be completely honest with you, I didn't want to discuss it in front of anyone. Well, how stupid of you. If anyone had seen you, you would have made it very awkward for all of us. Where were you? Professor, I... Blanche, would you be good enough to leave us? Let's stop sparring. You're angry because I took Blanche out. You're angry because since I've been home, Blanche and I have gotten to know each other pretty well. You know, Stephen, you always did smirk, even when you were a child. It's one of the things my father disliked about you. He was my father, too. You know, I'm inclined to think that father was disappointed in both of us. Neither of us fitted his concept of what a real man should be, a gun-toting, hard-drinking, tough-living, God-fearing citizen. 
He always used to say, the strong survived, the weak died. How wrong he was, Albert. Because you and I, the meek, have inherited the earth. I'll be honest with you, Stephen. I don't like you. I never have. I've never trusted you. And you're quite right when you say that I don't like this, this interest you have in Blanche. And I'll tell you something else. I've had the responsibility of your mother, your mother, not mine, for years. And I'm tired and strained. Therefore, I think we should make a decision. Either you make up your mind to go away permanently, or if you like, you stay and let me go. lost your best friend. You got nothing to worry about. If anybody tried in their funny business on you, I'd soon sock them in the jaw. Look at it this way, Helen. Murder's like a million dollar lottery. Sure it is, listen. You pick up the newspaper. You see someone's picture who's won a million dollars. You pick up another paper. There's a picture of someone who's been murdered. There's never me. There's never you. It's always somebody else, isn't it? There's safety in numbers, Helen. There's Oates and me and the professor and Stephen. We'll look after you. And there's Carlton, too. Shouldn't count too much on him. <laughs> and there's Nurse Barker. She'd be as good as any man. In fact, sometimes I think she is a man. In case you're interested, There's someone at the front door. What do you want? I was called to see Mrs. Warren. It's Dr. Perry, was he called? <laughs> I suppose they called Dr. Harvey first. You mean Mrs. Warren asked for me? Well. I've got me a patient now. I'm glad I was called, Helen. I've wanted to have a long talk with you. And I'm going to before I leave. How are you, Dr. Perry? I'm fine. How are you, Mrs. Warren? Did you know my husband? No, I didn't, Mrs. Warren. Of course not. He died years before you came here. You're a little like him. Firm step, strong hand, good eye. Thank you. I know you were very fond of him. He told me I wasn't as beautiful as his first wife, but I was a much better shot. The only kind of beauty he had any respect for was strength. And he had two sons, both weakly. They hated guns and hunting. He used to run away from them, Dr. Perry. Well, he got his release from a bottle. He died as he lived, happily, extravagantly. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You mustn't be. You mustn't be sorry for him. You should try to get some rest, Mrs. Warren. Yes, I know. I talk too much. I talk too much. Get Helen out of this house. Why? Because I know you love her. Take her away. Promise me you'll take her away from here. Very well. I promise. Take her away tonight. It's money you need. I'll get it for you. Oh. oh. Get me the ether, Helen. Get it? I'll go ask Nurse Barker. Come in, please, Nurse. Will you get me the ether? Helen can't seem to find it. It was used about an hour ago. Where did you put it? Let's have another look.
It's gone now, and you're the only people who've been in this room today. Unless, Mrs. Warren... You to be eat the barker? Why, I did no such thing. You always make me sit outside. Never mind. Maybe Professor Warren will know about it. I'll go and see him. Here. Where's my brandy? I finish it for your own good. Well, I wish you'd stop doing things for my own good. But everything that's happening in this house, it's better that you keep your wits about you. I'm never more witty than when I've had a little nip. I see better, I hear better, and I feel much better. Oates, would you mind coming out a moment and bring your hat and coat? There it is. Emma, let's be serious for a minute. I want you to stay awake until I get back. Keep an eye on Helen. I won't be long. I could keep a much better eye on Helen if I'd had a little nip. I can't understand. Either it was used less than two hours ago. Stephen used it and he said Helen gave it to him. Unfortunately, I have no other supply. Oats. I'm afraid you'll have to go into the village for some ether. You stole me out, Albert. Does it have to be done? If it didn't have to be done, I wouldn't ask you. All right, all right, I'll go. You won't find any in the village. I tried to get some this morning. I have to go all the way to Morristown. It'll take hours. Well, I'm sorry. It's an emergency. We have to have it. Yes, you're sorry, but I have to go. You should have some other stimulant at hand in the meantime. Brandy? That will do. I'll get a bottle. Oh. Will you ask Helen to come to the kitchen for it? Yeah. Mrs. Oates. Yes, sir? Come along with me while I get a bottle of brandy. Yes, sir. Dear, now I've done it. Did you bring a match? No, sir. Oh, well, never mind. Perhaps I have one. Huh. Here we are. I think it rolled over there, sir. Mrs. Oates. Your key, sir. <gasps> oh, my. Did I put one over on him? Easy as taking candy from a baby. Take a tip from me, Helen. If you ever carry the candle to the cellar for the professor and you fancy a bottle of his fine old brandy, just throw the candle to one side. Accidentally, on purpose, of course. Anything can happen in the dark. Presto. <laughs> now, I'll just wipe this off and uh, you can take it to Dr. Parry. Mrs. Warren's asleep. Professor Warren's with her now. I've been thinking things over. And Mrs. Warren's right. You should come with me tonight. You can stay at my mother's place until we can make arrangements to go to Boston. My mother will like you. I don't want to frighten you, Helen, but you heard Mrs. Warren a while ago. Her mind's growing steadily worse, and I'm afraid she may become violent. She seems obsessed by the idea that you get out of this house. And there may be something back of it. You'll go with me tonight. There are doctors in Boston who know all about your case. I want to take you there. Helen. When I left you this afternoon, I dropped in at the Fables. 
they have a guest visiting them from your hometown. Uh, uh, Mrs. Lindstrom. You know her? Well, she told me a story about a girl. A girl who was on her way home from school one day. She had good news for her parents. When she wasn't far from her home, she heard a fire engine rushing down the street. She started to run. When she turned the corner, she saw that it was her home that was in flames. There was a crowd outside. She wanted to scream herself, but somehow she couldn't. She tried to rush into the house, but was held back because it was hopeless. So, without being able to do one thing to help, she saw her mother and father burned to death. I'm sorry, Helen, but I had to do it. It's only because I wanted to help you. Go over everything that happened that day. Have the courage to see it all again. And by not blocking it out of your mind, you may find your voice again. I don't like being an outsider, and you shouldn't either. I know what I'm talking about because I'm an outsider here myself. A lot of people don't want me. They want me to quit, but I won't. Because there's at least one person who wants me here, and that's good enough for me. And there's one person who wants you to talk, and that ought to be good enough for you. Look at me. Look at me. You remember how wonderful it was when you had a voice? When you could say hello or thank you? When you could yell back at someone who started picking at you? I do it all the time. You look at me as though you don't believe it, but I know I'm right. Try to talk! Try it! Try it! Excuse me. My mother is asking for you, Helen. I'll speak to Professor Warren about your leaving. What is this about Helen leaving? I'll discuss it with your brother. Is it something you can't discuss with me? Why is she leaving? Where is she going? Well, I've been doing a great deal of thinking about Helen. I know her condition is due to shock. I'm sure a new mental therapy can restore her voice. I'd like to take her to Boston. Don't you think you're taking a tremendous responsibility, building up her hopes, making her think there's some miracle in store for her? It's up to her, not you. What you're doing is cruel and foolish. That girl has adjusted to her affliction. I think you should let it go at that. Suppose you let me mind my own business. It so happens I don't think much of your business, Dr. Perry. If there is a solution to Helen's problem, I think that solution ought to be in the hands of someone other than a country hick doctor. The only thing that keeps me from cracking you in the jaw is the almost certain possibility that it would break your neck. What's the trouble, doctor? The good country doctor, having lost his wits, is about to resort to his fists. Professor Warren, I know you're interested in Helen's welfare. I've told you what I've learned about her, and I've decided it's for her best interest that she leave here tonight. Tonight? Yes, she can stay at my mother's place until we can take her to Boston for the examination first thing in the morning. Well, Doctor, you know that I agree with you about the element of hope that you have for Helen, but... what's your reason for suddenly making her leave tonight? Well, Mrs. Warren feels... that she's in danger here. Well, surely you don't take the ramblings of a sick woman seriously. I take most things seriously. Doctor, there are many other considerations. Helen needs this position. It's her only means of support. No family. It won't be easy for her. I've thought of all those things, Professor. I... I intend to take care of her. Oh, I see. Well, I'm very glad for you and for her. You're a sentimentalist, Doctor. Tell me, are your humanitarian instincts restricted only to people with serious afflictions? You're very insolent. Dr. Perry. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, he is. Just a moment. It's for you, Doctor. Thank you. Hello? Helen. 
The Wilson boy's very sick. I have to go over there right away. Now, here's their phone number. You can pack where I'm gone. If you need anything before I get back, have Mrs. Oates call me. I'll be back as soon as I can. Be sure and bar the door behind me. And don't let anyone in but me. Keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live. Signify by saying, I do. Say, 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 I do. I understand you're going to leave us. Well, I don't know whether Dr. Parry is right or wrong. But I agree that you should have that chance to go to Boston. And I want you to understand if things don't work out satisfactorily, that you're always welcome to come here. Now you run along. I like to see women cry. Men like to see women cry. It makes them feel superior. Steve, I'm very unhappy and upset. You dramatize everything, Blanche. We've been very happy, at least I have. I don't like your attitude at all. I'm sorry. 
just I'm, I'm making trouble between you and your stepbrother. I don't like to hide anything I feel. Do you know how I feel about you? That's very sweet of you, Blanche. But are you sure you're telling me the truth? Truth about what? Just that I think you're uncomfortable because of your uh, past relationship with my brother. You are. Don't say it. Just answer my question. Get out. Don't be so melodramatic. I didn't realize you were so strong. I'm leaving here. I never want to see you again. I'll miss you. A house like this needs charm. I told you to get out. You're going to regret this. I'm sorry to intrude, Helen. I have a favor to ask of you. You're leaving tonight, and I want to go into town with you. I'm happy for you. Things will be so different when you're cured. I don't know what will become of me. I've got to leave this house. It hasn't been good for anyone here. I'm only taking a few things with me. Holtz can pick up my other things tomorrow. My suitcase is in the basement. I'll only be a few minutes. I closed that window tonight. I definitely know I did. Now, if only I knew who opened it. You're not that clever. And if you were a... the life out of me.
I told you not to touch me. Get out. I'll get out, Mrs. Warren. Not only out of here, but out of this house. Good riddance. But before I go, you're going to hear a few things. I'm tired of being a target for an evil old woman. Nobody's asking you to stay. If you got down on your bended knees, I wouldn't stay. I don't need this job. Why did you go there? You need a keeper, not a nurse. <laughs> I don't care if you never walk again. You can stay in that bed for the rest of your life. I've taken everything in my day, but I'll not put up with this. I'm leaving this house tonight. I soon clear them out. I hate nurses. Always fussing. Always washing your face. <laughs> Helen. Did you know there was a girl murdered here a long time ago? I saw it. Upstairs from the window. It was getting dark. I thought it was a tree in the garden. It stood so still and waited. Then when the poor, simple-minded creature came near the house, the tree moved, threw into the well. I was too late. I couldn't find the rope. You were that girl, Helen. Come here. Come here. You must go away. Leave this house. Go with Nurse Barker tonight. Don't wait for Dr. Perry. Don't wait for anyone. If you won't, you must do what I tell you. Get under the bed. You understand? You must hide under the bed. Why won't you do what I tell you to? Why won't you listen to me? Why won't anyone listen to me? Would you mind letting me have one of the wagons? I'll drive into the village and leave it there for oats to pick up in the morning. Very well. I'll go out with you and hatch up the wagon. You're very kind, Professor. I've been walking. In this rain? Yes, in this rain. I wonder if you'd mind doing something for me, Stephen. What? Nurse Parker is leaving us. And as long as you're already rather wet, perhaps you wouldn't mind hitching up the wagon for her. Everybody's leaving the old homestead. Like a holiday. It'll be a pleasure. For both of us. Goodbye, Professor Warren. Goodbye. Oh, Helen, will you tell Blanche I want to see her in the den?
you been here long? I was outside with Nurse Barker. I saw the basement door open. Did you come in that way? Helen, you must forget everything you've seen here. Let me handle this. Do you understand? Take the candle. I'll take you up to my stepmother's room. You stay there with her. I'll call the constable. Let me take care of things now. You've been through enough. You tried to telephone, didn't you? I'm glad you couldn't. You looked in this mirror once before today. I watched you. You had no mouth then, just as you have none now. Look at yourself. Look! you from achieving the quiet that I can give you was Stephen. And you locked him up downstairs. We're quiet now, Helen. I'm glad I waited. Everyone's out of the way. Mrs. Oates is drunk. 
because I purposely let her steal a bottle of brandy. And Oates is going to look for Ethan because I made sure there was no Ethan. And Blanche, whom I loved, didn't love me. So she had to die. She's dead in that piece. And Stephen, you took care of him for me. Stephen is weak, as I once was. What a pity my father didn't live to see me become strong. To see me dispose of the weak and imperfects of the world whom he detested. He would have admired me for what I'm going to do. <laughs> Harry in town. He said, tell Helen he won't be able to pick her up tonight. The Wilson boy is very sick and he has to stay there. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll tell her, Constable. Well, I'll be on my way then. Good night.
murderer. You killed him. You killed them all. The servant girl in the well. The others in the town. Today, the cripple in the hotel. You killed them all. Tonight, it would have been Helen. I heard you. Steve. Get me Steve. been done. Ten years too late. <gasps> Forgive me, Stephen. I thought it was you. We always waited till you came home, so I thought it was you. Oh. The doctor, get Dr. Perry. Hurry. Thank <laughs> you. 